Thank you. Thanks, Marie. Thank you, Julia, for reading that. Uh, it's a well-known psalm, 121, one that I know the choir has sung many times for us. It says, I was preparing and thinking and praying about today that I realised that it's only been the past 12 years since living in Liverpool Diocese. I've not lived on a hill. I've got some photographs of some hills here to share with you, um, which is there with me a moment. Some of them you may recognise and some of them you may not. This first one here uh, was the world's steepest street, a street in New Zealand, and then it lost its crown. There we are, you can see it there, you can see the house. Yeah. And then it lost its crown to this one here in Wales, and uh, some of you may have walked up or down that street in Wales. And then after some debate and some more remeasuring of hills, uh, it went back to this hill, crowned once again the world's steepest street. Another steep street that you may recognise, especially if you've been down to Dorset or if you cast your mind back to the early 70s, and that famous Hovis effort, the boy putting his bicycle up Gold Hill in Shaftesbury. So, as Marie said, this, uh, over August, we are going to be focusing our Sunday readings, our Sunday reflections on the book of Psalms. It's part of the Bishop of Liverpool's Rule of Life and his summer reading challenge to engage in reading the Bible. Two years ago, he called us to read through Mark's Gospel. Last year, it was the book of Jonah and this year, Psalms. There's no expectation that we will read all the way through the Psalter, but... Um, perhaps read one or two or a psalm a week and engage with it during August. And so as we say, the next five weeks our Sunday reflections will be on the psalms and will continue to be led in our midweek thought by the senior staff and the summer reflections that they've prepared for us. As you're no doubt aware, psalms cover the whole wealth of human emotions and experience. We have psalms of joy and psalms of praise, such as Psalm 150. Psalms of wonder at God's awesome knowledge of us, such as 139, you knit me together in my mother's womb. Psalms of desperation, Psalm 22, quoted by Jesus as he hung on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And there's a well-known psalm, 23, the Lord is my shepherd. When we have today, I lift my eyes to the hill. And sound of reminiscent, 137, for example, by the rivers of Babylon, we sat down and wept as we remember Zion. To help us work through our psalms, uh, we're going to be basing our reflections and our psalms on a book by James Jones, People of the Blessing. And I've got a photograph of the cover just here for us. Okay. You may have this book on your shelves. Um, if not, there are some copies, and I'm sure we'd be quite happy to share some of ours with you. It, it, it divides the Psalms into different sections and different categories. So, with people of the blessing, you might like to read along and do that. There we go. So, this Psalm today, 121, is part of a collection of 15 psalms, and they're all entitled Song of Ascent. They run from 120 to uh, 135. They're generally believed to have been songs that were sung by the Jewish people when they were on a pilgrimage, when they were growing up to God's sanctuary or a festival. It doesn't take much imagination, does it, to hear the people singing this particular psalm as they walk, looking at the hills surrounding them. They may not look quite like and all in country hills, but as they sing, perhaps together or responsibly, I lift my eyes to the hills, I was responding, where does my help come from? Well, my help comes from the Lord, who made the heaven and the earth. As the hills and the mountains point heavenwards, so they point to a being beyond the here and now, beyond humankind, to God. There's a great knowledge in this psalm of the characteristics of God. He's a God of protection, we learn, who never sleeps. 
protects us from the effects of the sun and from our nighttime fears. He watches over our life from our coming in to our going out, both now and forevermore. What more then could the people who originally sung this psalm and those of us ask for today? It's no wonder that as we continue to read it all these years later, a joyful celebratory note is struck every time we enter those opening words. I wonder if this psalm could be read in a different way. Is there any way this psalm of joyful celebration could be a foreshadow of what was to come in Christ? If we were to read it again and place ourselves in a crowd, maybe in a crowd on the Sermon on the Mount, Maybe in a crowd listening to Jesus preaching, standing at the bottom of the hill, looking up to him. What if we imagine at that transfiguration, Peter, James or John, seeing as the crowd, as, as a cloud came and enveloped them and Jesus stood with Moses and Elijah. What if we were to be there at the bottom of the hill, looking up? three men hung on a cross dying and heard one of them promise a criminal next to him that today you will be with me in paradise. Looking up the hill in another way, the one who made heaven and earth. Can we understand this psalm differently in a new context of our Easter Sunday faith? There's little doubt that the singers of the original psalm knew Emmanuel. God with them as they sought to explain the constancy and the faithfulness of God in ways that they could understand. Those who were there in the above mentioned situations, listening to Jesus preaching the Sermon on the Mount, looking up at the transfiguration, looking, watching as the crucifixions took place. They truly turned their eyes to see where their help came from in the manifestation of God. Jesus, who, as John put it, was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Nothing that was made was made without him. Real, alive and tangible. The disciples heard the promises made by Jesus. The promise that this day we continue to believe in. By his Holy Spirit, God is with us always to the end of the age, watching over our life coming and are going both now and forevermore. We've all the world over been through a huge amount since the new year dawned. All that life would usually throw at us plus even more besides. More besides, more beyond our wildest imagination. And it's through all that helping us to adapt and to change with all the seasons of life. To live in the uncertainty and the frustration, the confines of the here and now, in the hope that next month things will get back to normal, will resemble perhaps what we were used to. We've had the constant knowledge that our help has come from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And now as we enter August, anticipating a return to school and work, a return to church and social activities, meeting our family and friends for the first time in so many months. At the same time knowing that these events may not happen as we wish them to, we still continue to join for our worship, week by week, either live together now, or recorded on the YouTube channel, or via the telephone line. And as we do so, let us, in our Easter Sunday faith, keep our eyes fixed on the hills of our faith, but we too may in our words and in our actions declare the source of our help at all times and seasons does, has and always will continue to come from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Amen.